If you own a BenQ SMU hardware calibrated display, the best thing that you can do is to use a program called Palette Master Element that is developed by BenQ to calibrate your display. What Palette Master Element does in this case is that it will talk directly with the computer that is built into your SMU hardware calibrated display. It will use the lookup table inside there and do all the color adjustment at the panel level. This way you're getting true accurate colors. If you use these devices, for example, the i1 Display Pro or the Spider X or any of the, the devices by these companies, the one thing is that if you use their OEM software that comes with these devices, those software won't talk with the computer that's built into the display. This way you won't be able to do a true hardware calibration. The problem with Palette Master Element in the past is that the past few versions is plagued with a lot of bugs that prevents the program from running properly or calibrating your screen properly. BenQ have just released Palette Master Element version 1.3.8 that is a significant release and I normally don't do a video for every single point upgrade but I feel that this upgrade is significant enough for me to show you what has improved, what bugs have been fixed, and also my recommended settings so that you can calibrate your SWU hardware calibrate display for the largest color space possible. I'm Art Siwan Sang, BenQ Ambassador, and let's get started. For this video, I will be using the BenQ SW2700PT. The reason why I'm using this panel is because this is the first BenQ release hardware calibrated display in the SWU line and I also happen to have the original panel from year 2015. So the problem with the year 2015 panel is that it's running on the really old firmware and again Palette Master Element has had issues with calibrating display for the past few dot releases. So this one has fixed that problem. To check if you have the older BenQ SW2700PT panel, you can look on the back, there's a label. If your manufacturer date of the display is sometime in the year 2015, you're probably running on the old firmware version. Now, the principle that I'm going to go over in this video will also work for any of the SW displays in the line too, including a new one that will be coming out, the SW321C. A couple of things here I want to mention is that I'm using the MacBook Pro. This is the MacBook Pro with a USB Type-C port. And what I'm using to connect to the display is a USB Type-C to a DisplayPort cable. This is one direct cable. There's no adapters or anything in between. I will put a link to that cable in the description below because I know this cable works without any issues. What I'm going to use for this calibration is the i1 Display Pro. However, I also have the Spider X here and the Spider X will work to calibrate these as well. I have done the calibration on both Mac and PC with both of these devices and I know that they will work without any issues. So let's get started. I'm going to call up Palette Master Element here. And I already have the X-Rite i1 Display Pro linked to the program here. So what I'm going to do first of all is select the i1 Display Pro. We'll do a check sensor. Now the other thing I want to mention too is that I also have a USB Type-C to a USB-A adapter and I have a USB that's actually linking to the display right now too. This way, this is also part of the reason why I'm not getting FTDI driver error. So this way the program can just launch right away. I'm going to go ahead and use advanced mode here and we're going to go and click on start. So under workflow here, what I'm going to do is choose profiling and then I'm going to come click on next in the bottom. Now. With the older version of the SW2700PT, if I go in here under the default, Palette Master Element automatically detects the firmware on my display. And it knows that with this specific firmware, with this specific display, the only option I have is to use panel native. For the older SW2700PT, you can't use any other color space. You can't use Adobe RGB, sRGB, Rec. 709. You can only do panel native, but it will work. The thing here is this, if you use any other SW display in the series, you can go ahead and set this to other RGB primaries that I mentioned before. Also, if you're running on the newer version, let's say you just purchased SW2700PT within the past two years or three years, those are on the new firmware and you can calibrate those to any RGB primary. But here's the reason why even if you have those displays, you want to come and choose panel native. The reason why is because panel native is going to give you the largest color space possible, the largest color gamut possible on your display when you run a calibration on it. 
I'm not going to switch display here to another SW model. I'm going to go ahead and stick with this one for this demo. But what I'm going to do is that. Now the other thing here is that if you have watched my video before, one of the main key things that I've always mentioned in the video is that you always have to come and change the luminance. The luminance of 160 candela in this case is way too high. It's going to be too bright. Your prints are going to come out a little bit darker than what you're seeing in your screen. The optimal range that I like to use personally is 80 candela. It's going to make the display really dark. Now some people don't really like that. The BenQ display can handle a darker candela like 80 just fine. But for all of you out there, anywhere between 80 to 120 or 100 to 120 candela are a great value for you to use. In this case, I'm going to conform a little bit and go ahead and set this to 100 candela. Gamma, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 2.2. And right at the bottom here, black point, this is super crucial in this version of Palette Master Element 1.3.8. If you set it to absolute zero, the calibration, the validation part will always fail. And I have done tests on this on Mac PC, all the different devices using different methods. It's bizarre. I can't figure it out yet why, and I'm working with BenQ on figuring out why that's happening. But as of now, the best thing you can do is make sure that you change this back point to relative. Once you've changed these settings that I've outlined here, you can go ahead and move forward. Now, one more thing here is that because I've gone in and changed these settings already, under the default here, it's going to show custom setting right away. It's still on panel native. You don't have to worry about it. If you're running on the older, again, the older firmware of the SW2700PT is going to look like this. The newer one, it will show panel native as an RGB primary right there on the screen. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out here and go into the next screen. So in this case, what I'm going to do is go ahead and use the calibration one slot. This is the hardware calibration slot that's built into BenQ display. On these older SW2700PT, there are two slots. On the newer models, there are three slots that you can use. So you can link up multiple computers and have an individual calibration for each devices that you own. What I'm going to do here, because I'm running on a Macintosh, I'm going to go ahead and set the Pro Valve version to version 4. I'm going to leave that at default. This is the area where I'm going to go ahead and come in and change some of the settings here. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this one a little bit. Under Profile Type, so there's a couple ways to build the profile. There's the matrix. That's the one that I've been recommending in the past because that's the one that's been giving the least amount of bugs in the past version of Palette Master Element. But realistically, the better way to build the profile is to use a 16-bit LUT. Because what a 16-bit LUT profile would do is that it would actually use a lookup table to build the profile. When you're using a matrix, it's using a grid of 3 by 3 and it's doing a relative color between all those 3 by 3 grids and it's storing a white point separately. When you're using a 16-bit LUT, you're guaranteed that you're using the actual true lookup table to build these profiles. So the profile is going to come out more accurate. The other thing that I would do too is change the patch size to large. It's going to take just a touch longer, but trust me, it is worth it. Now, the other thing too that I want to mention is two more things here. Number one, to make sure that your display has an opportunity to warm up. Leave it running for 10-15 minutes before you come in and do the calibration. It's going to be much more stable that way. And secondly, guess what? You don't have to be in a dark room. I have these lights shining on the display. But just watch, the calibration will work. So this will be just fine. These are super bright lights. In your area that you're working, it will be much dimmer than this. You will be okay. All right, let's move on here. So I'm going to go ahead and move the mouse down and click on Start Measurement. Because I'm using the i1 Display Pro device, it's going to tell me to go ahead and take the i1 Display Pro, flip the cap over so the lens is exposed. Go ahead and pull this across here. And now what I'm going to do is center this on the display right there for now. Go ahead and click on continue. It's going to show an outline for me. This is where I have to place the device, so we'll wait a second here. And what I'm also going to do is make sure that I tilt the display back like so as well. This way I guarantee that the device, this colorimeter, is laying absolutely flat on the display. Now if you happen to use the data color Spider X, sometimes what happens is that when you pull this apart, like so, when you hang this on the display, it has a tendency for this part to pop out like that. What you can do here is just go ahead and manipulate the cable that way. This way, this spider device will lay flat on the display too. So that's just something to keep in mind. This is an experience that I've actually run into with the spider devices.
Okay, moving on here. Once this show up, once I've aligned a device, I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue. It's gonna do the LUT write out right now. So it's gonna measure the LUT, it's gonna adjust the display brightness. And then afterwards, it's gonna do the color measurement. What I'm also gonna do is pull this to the side right here. And you will see that once it starts uh, measuring the colors, it will show through in here. With version 1.3.8, Palette Master Element also runs much faster too in terms of just calibrating, adjusting the brightness on the display so you won't have to wait as long for the calibration. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna speed this part up and then I'll come back and show you the result at the end and do a validation. So we're almost finished with the calibration here. We're gonna wait for it to do a writing LUT. So this is gonna adjust the brightness one last time to the lookup table inside the display. And then from there, we'll continue. So now that it finishes the calibration, it's gonna show you this calibration report, which is pretty much the manufacturer, the model, the serial number of the display, the profile name, the target luminance that we want to get to and the achieve luminance in this case is able to achieve 99.6589 candela that's a lot of decimal point for candela considering that a display change or display brightness change of about 10 to 20 candela are really hard to detect with your eyes it's just really interesting the color space here or for the target color temperature we want it around 65k it actually achieved 65k so the next thing what i'm going to do now is go ahead and click on validate calibration i just pretty much left the i1 display pro there if you're like me i would just leave it on the display this way you don't have to change and you know we open and close the cover again so i'll just go ahead and do that click continue and go ahead and click continue on this screen one more time and this is now going to do the validation measuring. Once this is done, it's going to give us a delta E value and we'll be able to see how good or how close our colors are to the reference value. And in this case, it passes, which again, I'm not surprised because I've actually spent a whole day running about 20 different scenarios on calibration on both Mac and PC with both of these devices, with all these other settings. But anyway, um, so what we have achieved here is an average delta E of 0.52 and a maximum delta E of 1.25. Now those values are fantastic. They're great values for display. So again, Palette Master Element version 1.3.8, calibrating your display using panel native, making sure that you set the luminance to the proper luminance for photo viewing, in this case, 100 to 120 candela. Change your black point so that is set to relative black point and not absolute because the absolute one will fail. And lastly, in this case, you want to use the 16-bit LUT. Now, in this case, I've also done the test with the matrix um, to profile type two, and matrix also works, but 16-bit LUT, what I'm able to do is achieve a delta E value that's much smaller. So that's just a little information piece for you here. So these are the best settings for the latest version of BenQ Palette Master Element, version 1.3.8. I hope that you find this video useful. If you haven't yet, please like, subscribe to my channel, hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload really good informative videos like this. And until next time, I just write.